everyone! Welcome to another skirt tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to make a rectangle skirt, which is one of the easiest garments to fit and make. You can make these whatever length and size you want and from pretty much any fabric you like. They can also be used for any occasion. Rectangle skirts are the basis for the bottom half of wedding dresses, a lot of Lolita fashion designs, and roughly half the things that Mod Cloth sells. So knowing how to make one of them is really handy, whether you want to make one for school or work, or make one that's full length and part of a renaissance costume. They're really that versatile, and they're also a lot of fun to sew, so let's get started! The amount of fabric you need will depend on the amount of volume you want, the width of the fabric, and the length of your skirt, but I'm using 2 yards of a 44 inch wide fabric. I'd recommend using a non-stretch fabric for this skirt, but the type of material is up to you. I'm using a quilter's cotton for the brand Keepsake Calico in the print The Starry Night, and I purchased it from Joann's. You'll also need a little bit of fusible interfacing, a quarter of a yard should be plenty, and a zipper, and a set of hooks and eyes. You'll also want a ruler of some sort, a spool of thread, scissors, a soft measuring tape, chalk or some sort of marking pen, pins and a hand sewing needle, though this could be sewn by hand I'll also be using a sewing machine which obviously isn't pictured. The pattern for this project is really simple. Rectangle skirts are quite literally made up of two rectangles, one for the waistband and another for the skirt, but unfortunately there's still a little bit of math involved before getting started. You'll need to figure out how long you want the skirt to be, and you'll also need to use the measuring tape to find your waist measurement. Once you find those measurements, write them down so you don't forget them. Then add one and a half inches of seam allowance to your length measurement for the skirt. When I mention length measurement in the future, I'll be referring to the desired length plus the seam allowance. And the length measurement for the waistband will be 2.5 inches, so you can write that down too. And to find the width of the waistband, add one inch of seam allowance to your waist measurement. When it comes to the width of the skirt, that's pretty much up to you, but I suggest making the skirt at least three times wider than your waist measurement. Since I like really full skirts, I'll be making mine more than four times my waist measurement, and because of my fabric's width and print, I have to make it from three panels. But this may be unnecessary for your skirt depending on the fabric you're using. Now use a pen and ruler to mark the length measurement onto the fabric. Since my fabric has a horizontal print to it, I'll be cutting my skirt from three panels. But if you're using a fabric with a vertical print or no print at all, you may be able to cut the skirt as a single piece. Cut your skirt out along the lines you marked, and in case it isn't obvious, my fabric is folded in half here to make the marking and cutting process faster. It's actually twice the width you're seeing. If you choose to do this, you may want to pin a few inches away from the lines you marked, just to make sure the layers of fabric don't slip around. Now since I cut my fabric panels out horizontally, the edges are already finished. This is called the selvage, which is how the edges are finished when the fabric is being manufactured. Because of this, I don't have to worry about these edges fraying. If you cut your skirt out on a different grain line, this might not be the case. So I'd suggest serging these edges or covering them with bias tape or sewing the panels together with French seams. That way they won't fray no matter how many times you wash and wear the skirt. Now pin the panels together with the right sides facing each other. The goal here is to sew all the panels together so they form a single rectangle. And if your skirt also has a print, make sure the print has the same orientation on all the panels before sewing. Now sew the panels together with a half inch seam allowance. Iron the seams open from the back of the fabric to make it nice and flat. Now using a marker or a pen or chalk, which is what I'm using, draw a line one inch away from the bottom edge of the fabric. Pull the bottom edge of the fabric up until it touches the line, then pin it in place. Now sew that down about a quarter inch away from the edge of the fabric. This stitching won't end up being visible, so if it isn't perfect, don't worry about it. But you will have to do some more precise stitching later, so think of this as practice. Now we are going to repeat that process again, turning the bottom edge inward by a half inch and pinning it down. 
This time I'm turning the edge inward by eye, but you could draw another guideline if you want. Now this time around you want to sew as close to the edge of the fabric that is folded inward as possible, so you have an even row of stitching a half inch away from the bottom edge of the skirt. Unfortunately I don't have much advice for doing this other than practice and going at a speed that works for you. It's better to go slowly and do a good job than rush through it and have sloppy stitch work. Now you can iron across the hemline to make it nice and sharp. You may also want to iron the fabric in general since it will be easier to do that now than after it's gathered. And once this is done, set the skirt aside because it's time to work on the waistband. Cut the waistband out to be an inch longer than your waist measurement and two and a half inches wide. Then use what you just cut out as a guide for cutting out the lining, which will have the exact same dimensions. Since I had limited printed fabric, I'm cutting the lining out from a different fabric, but you can use the same material if you have enough. Now pin the two pieces together with the right sides facing each other. And sew a half inch away from the top edge all the way along. Then iron the seam so it's flat and fuse a rectangle of interfacing over top. The interfacing will stiffen the fabric and keep the waistband smooth when it's worn. Then fold the waistband in half along the seam line and iron it once again. To keep the waistband in this position, sew across the top edge as close to the edge of the fabric as you possibly can. And to finish off the raw edges on the sides and bottom of the waistband, we'll need some bias tape. So making that is the next step. Use your ruler to mark straight lines, two inches apart, that go diagonally through the fabric. When you cut diagonally through fabric, you're cutting on its bias. Bias cut strips will have a natural stretch to them and be less prone to fraying, which is why they make the best seam binding. And once again, you could cut these strips out from the same fabric used for the skirt. I just didn't have enough left, so I'm cutting them from broadcloth. And I didn't have much broadcloth left either, so I cut out a few strips and sewed them together to make a long one. After the strips are cut out, sew them together with a half inch seam allowance. Then iron the raw edges of the strip inward by a half inch. And you want to do a very thorough job of this so the raw edges stay folded inward even when the iron is removed. I'll go more in depth about this later on in the video, but unfold one side of the bias tape and pin it so the raw edge is aligned with the raw edge of the waistband. And a bit of the bias tape should be folded over the top of the waistband. These are sewn with the right sides facing each other and a half inch seam allowance. Then the bias tape is folded so it covers the raw edge and it's top stitched down. Now the waistband is done for the time being and it's time to gather the skirt. I'm gathering my skirt down by hand since I find that creates the prettiest most dense gathers. And it's super easy to do. I'm using a basic running stitch a half inch away from the top edge of the fabric and I'm pulling the thread tightly as I sew, which causes the material to gather. And if you don't know how to sew a running stitch, I'll link a tutorial in the description box. My tip for doing this is to thread your needle with two strands of thread and pull very carefully when gathering the fabric. If the thread snaps, you'll have to start over. Keep on gathering until you reach the end of the fabric. Adjust the gathers and pull the thread until the top edge of the skirt is the same length as your waistband. Then tie the thread off. Once the thread is tied off, adjust the gathers until they are even all the way across the top edge of the fabric. Then line the bottom edge of the waistband up with the gathered edge and pin it in place. I like to pin these pieces together with the pins going vertically, and I always line up the two ends first, then pin from the center outward. Once that's done, I flip the skirt over and place pins an inch or more away from the edge. This time I put them horizontally, and these are just to make sure the fabric from the skirt doesn't flip up and end up being sewn to the waistband accidentally. It's happened to me many times before, and though it's fixable, it's always better to avoid it in the first place. Now sew the pieces together with a half inch seam allowance. Remove the vertical pins as you go, but the other pins should be low enough down that they don't interfere with sewing the seam. Now back to the bias tape. Once again, unfold one edge and line it up with the raw edge at the waistline. And you want to tuck one end of the bias tape over the edge of the skirt like this. Otherwise, the raw edge on the end of the bias tape will be visible later on. Now go ahead and pin it in place all the way across the waistline. 
Sew the bias tape on with a seam allowance that is slightly smaller than a half inch. Otherwise, it may interfere with the seam that attaches the waistband to the skirt. Now fold the bias tape over to the other side of the skirt and pin the folded edge so it touches the line of stitching that attach it to the other side. That doesn't sound like it makes a lot of sense, but it does when you're doing it, I promise. And sew it down as close to the folded edge as you can. Now it's time for the zipper, and to be honest, I think the instructions that come with the zipper are the best. There are a lot of zipper hacks out there that are supposed to make it easier, but I've never had much luck with them, so these are the instructions that I'm following. But first measure from the waistline down until where you want the zipper to end. This is usually 8 to 12 inches. And pin the material below where the zipper ends together with the right sides facing each other. Then sew this with a half inch seam allowance and make sure to iron it once you're done. My camera was not turned on for the first half of attaching the zipper, but I'll show you the process on the other half. Basically you sew the zipper on with the right side of the fabric facing it. This is done with a quarter inch seam allowance. Then pin the fabric from the right side of the skirt so it sits against the teeth of the zipper. Align the zipper foot with the zipper and sew across the edge. Then sew across the bottom of the zipper and trim off excess if the zipper you bought is too long. Now for the hook and eye. This is sewn to the top of the waistband and is done to bring the material closer together, which makes doing up the zipper easier. Once again, the packet comes with a diagram, which is probably more helpful than this camera angle. Both the hook and the eye have loops on the other end, and the goal is to sew through these loops several times to hold them in place. I use two strands of thread for this and try to make sure that the hook and eye are both hidden underneath the waistband so they aren't visible when the skirt is worn. Once you're done, tie the thread off and that's it! The skirt is complete and ready to be worn. I've paired mine with a petticoat from Lake Avenue since I like very voluminous skirts, but it looks pretty cute without one too. And like I said earlier, these skirts can be made any length and width you like from pretty much any fabric. It's also a very easy project, I just have a tendency to overcomplicate things to make sure every step is clear. I hope you enjoyed this video, I'll leave links to my other skirt tutorials down below if you're interested, along with more information about this project. Thanks so much for watching, I shall talk to you all in a new video very soon.